Hello, good morning. Welcome. Saturday morning, Think and Grow Rich, the Entrepreneur's Journey. This is Paul Martinelli. We're going to get started here. Oh, just in about a minute, let some people jump in. Really excited for you today. This is probably one of the most misunderstood uh, chapters of all time. So I'm glad you're here with us to talk about the transmutation of sexual energy. Um, let me just say, you'll see in the comments below, there's some re free resources for uh, this program. Uh, so you can click on that link. Many of you, thank you, uh, have sent in uh, requesting information about our, our mastermind groups. I think there's only three or four seats left uh, for the mastermind group in June. We have, we have two in June. Um, one is already sold out. So I think we've only got just a few more seats. So if you're interested, uh, make sure you can, you can send a, an email to Rick at paulmartinelli.net and he can give you information about that. Um, this whole series is now on YouTube. So if you missed any of the lessons, you can go to our YouTube channel uh, and, and catch the whole series there. If, if you're getting value uh, from these teachings, I would really appreciate two things. One is if you comment, uh, you know, let us know that you're enjoying it. Let us know in each lesson what, what, what's serving you. And then down there in the bottom, go ahead and hit, hit the share button. Um, and help us, you know, bring this out to the world. I'm, I'm doing this completely for free, and that'll help. Today, uh, I have a, I have a mastermind group. Uh, lots of people who are in town, and so uh, I'm not going to be able to spend the full time teaching this lesson as I would really love to do. So what I've done is I've gone to the archives to Think and Grow Rich number three. Uh, and I've taken my teaching from that particular uh, series. And we're going to play that video here in just one minute. Um, in that video, I was teaching the entire series. This series, I'm teaching it through the perspective of an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur's journey. In TAGR3, I was talking about our departure points, where we are in our life, and our arrival points, where we want to go. So it's a little bit of a twist <clears throat> on the filter, but the teaching is so good. Um, you will be so well served. So I, I hope that you'll stay, watch this recorded video. You're absolutely going to love it. Uh, there may be an offer that's mentioned inside that video because this video I think I did back in 2016. Whatever offers there are that are in the video are no longer uh, are no longer good. This was that was back in 2016. So the only thing that's available right now is if you'd like to join our mastermind group or if you'd like to join our fully resourced mentoring program. Uh, so you can click on the links there and learn more. And of course, I do one on one coaching and mentoring and would love to do that. So <clears throat> enjoy this teaching on the most misunderstood probably chapter of all time in this book on Think and Grow Rich. You know, many people teach this book, but very few will teach this chapter. And I think it's because they don't understand it. And we're going to talk about, he talks about sexual energy. We're going to talk about the spiritual, intellectual, and physical expression of energy. And this all ties right to the law of perpetual transmutation of energy, that energy is in a constant state of change. Enjoy the video. Thanks for joining. Be well. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Well, we are coming in for a landing here on Think and Grow Rich. We're on the chapter now of sexual transmutation of energy. It is a fantastic lesson. And really, I think one of the highlights of, of the book, because so many times, and, and we'll, we'll look at this in the lesson, we think of sex just in the physical energy. And isn't it true that that's how we also see things? When we're experiencing life, we see things really on one dimension when we simultaneously live on three planes of existence. And this chapter, I think better than any other chapter, really forces us into that consideration and allows us to get a really good glimpse of how one type of energy may be expressed in different degrees on different planes. And so again, as we look at this chapter on sex transmutation, we're exploring it from our current departure points. We're comparing where we are, right? We're looking at where we are. We're comparing this life to this arrival point. And we're saying, what competing commitments do I have in behavior and belief? What, what incongruencies do I have in my life right now that hold me to this current pattern? that has me conforming to this life rather than the life I'm claiming. 
So when I first was started to read the book, the word transmutation scared me. You got to remember, I'm I'm reading the book from this perspective and belief that I'm a high school dropout, that I'm not as intelligent of other people, and all of a sudden this word transmutation comes up, and for me that's a big word, and it scared me. Big word scared me. I didn't know what it was. And, you know, I have found that. One of the greatest ways in my learning model to dispel fear is for me to gain understanding of something, for me to really explore and discover and challenge and play with. And you'll hear me oftentimes on call say, well, you got to play with this idea. Play with this idea. That means get engaged with it. And so I began to really study this idea of transmutation. And th that's the part of this chapter that I want to bring forward. If we, if we look at lines one and two, he says, the meaning of the word transmute in simple language is the changing or transferring of one element or form of energy into another. But see, the real power is that the changing takes place by law. That, that the transmutation is the changing of one form of energy to another. But it, that, that happens by law. It doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen by luck. It doesn't happen by chance. It happens by law. And when there is a change in the frequency, when there is a change, when there is a transmutation of energy, it occurs by law and by a causative force. And recognize that you and I are the highest creation of God's causative forces. We've been given dominion over all things. So this power to transmute all the energy and every source of energy, all the thought energy, to transmute the thought energy you have as an idea into its physical manifestation here, into this world, happens by law and through a causative force, and you are God's highest creation of causativity. And so never forget your power to change everything. Everything. Never forget that you've been gifted by God. This idea of transmutation, that it happens by law. And that this, that this, this law of transmutation flows through you as a gift from God, as a promise from God for you to have dominion over all things. That God's gift to you is that you are causative. Now, <clears throat> it operates by free will through you. Just because you are causative and just because you can change everything doesn't mean that you do. And now he sets up three lines of understanding of kind of, I think, really what he's trying to teach in the book. And you've heard me share this so many times is that we simultaneously live on three planes of existence. And this idea of sex, when most of us think of sex or sex energy, we absolutely get a picture of it for most of us. On the physical realm, it's very easy for us to understand the act of sex on the physical realm. And yet, and yet we know that it is an expression of its polar opposite, that everything in physical form has as its polar opposite something in the spiritual realm, right? And so it's, so it's, so, so it is connected. So he says here on lines three and seven, he says, don't get trapped into living at this lowest level. Don't get trapped at just seeing sex at its lowest level. Don't get trapped in your own thinking about your own belief at its lowest level. Don't be trapped into thinking that you can't have that because the things in the physical world do not predict the way for you to have it. Don't get trapped in this physical world. And so he says the subject, this state of mind, is generated. Then he's not when he talks about this state of mind, he's not just talking about this state of mind of sex. He's talking about this state of mind of being trapped in the physical world, seeing life only on this one plane or dimension. He says this. He says because of ignorance on the subject, the state of mind is generally associated with the physical, and because of improper influences to which most people have been subjected in acquiring knowledge of sex. Things essentially physical, physical have highly biased the mind. He says, uh, he says that if, if we look at it, he says the, 
the, the perpetuation of mankind, the maintenance of health, we're in lines 10 and 12, the perpetuation of mankind, the maintenance of health, as health as a therapeutic agency has no equal, the transformation of mediocrity into genius through transmutation. And on lines 13 and 14, he makes it, he makes this lesson very, very simple for us to understand. Now, you can overcomplicate this chapter if you want, but I think here he makes this very easy. If, if you want to, if you want to grab the learning out of this chapter, I think you grab it right now. Again, you could, you could go all the way down the rabbit hole on this chapter and trust me and, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take us in, in, in probably a bit of a different direction, but, on, 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 on line 13 and 14, he says, sex transmutation is simple and easily explained. It means the switching of the mind from thoughts of physical expression to thoughts of some other nature. Boom. That's it. It's simple. But again, just because, don't, don't let the simplicity fool you. Just because it's simple, it, it doesn't mean it's easy because switching needs to be done by us. The switching of things, the change of things has to be done by us. Now, it happens by law, but you and I are causative. And when we are trapped in ignorance or if, if when, when, when we become really emotionally involved or emotionally attached, remember what I said before, attachment is the cause of all suffering. It's really hard to make that switch. He says it right here on, on, on line 15. He says, sex desire is the most powerful of human desires. So it's very hard to make this shift. And because it's so powerful, it's hard to break the attachment of the physical and the emotional tuning into that frequency of sex desire. Because we are, we are so tuned into it and we are so attached to it at the physical and emotional level, it's hard to detach and it's hard to transmute because we get so fixed in seeing it only in the other dimension. Now, I'm not going to spend hours going again line through line for the chapter. I, 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 I didn't do it in others. So, you know, I'm going to lump, you know, like I did in the other chapters, I'm going to lump some pretty big ideas together so we can get at the heart of the lesson. So let's, let's look at this one. The desire for sex expression is inborn and natural. He says that in the chapter. It, that, that the desire for sex expression, it's inborn and it's natural. Two, he says the goal is not to lessen it or weaken it or get rid of it. The goal is to channel the energy to its highest use and highest good. That's, that's the goal of, 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 of understanding this chapter. Three, like many other things, some have a higher expression of this. Some people have a higher expression of this energy and drive on the physical plane. Others will have a higher expression and a higher drive on the intellectual plane. Some will have it more on the physical and some will even have it on the spiritual. And so I encourage you to determine which is it for you. As you look at sex as an energy. Sex is an energy. Which is it for you? How does it express itself? Is it more dominant? Is, is it a stronger frequency on the physical or intellectual or spiritual? Now, for me, it was on the physical. That's where that sex energy was dominant, was on the physical expression. Now, I know what you're thinking. You say, oh, well, of course it was. You're a guy. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, this, we're not, we're not talking, you see, we're not talking about the act of sex, right? We're talking about the energy of sex. I'm not, we, we all have a desire for sex. I'm not talking about just the desire for sex. I'm also talking about the drive for sex, right? And, and, and I'm also talking about the things that occur on the physical plane, right? Or that do not occur emotionally and spiritually when you're attached to it just on the physical side. So on the physical side, there's certainly this desire for sex. All of us have a desire for sex. But um, if, it's, if you're dominant in, in, in the expression on the physical, it goes from desire to a drive, 
And again, when we're attached to this energy of sex at the physical, there are certain emotional and spiritual attributes of this energy that are not in our awareness when it's a dominant energy in the physical plane. Just as if it's if this energy of sex is dominant at the intellectual level for you, there will be an expression of that energy that's missing for you on the physical plane. Okay? So on the intellectual side, the drive may present itself as artistic or creative. Uh, you might be a writer, an artist, a singer. You make, you create things. You make music. You make art. They make stories. They are creating. And this, of, of course, if we think about it, remember what I said, that this energy is for the, is for the, is, is for the creation of mankind, right? The perpetration of, 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 of the, the perpetration right? of, of mankind, right? The perpetuation of mankind, right? So it's creative energy. And so there is certainly, we see it in the physical realm, but now we see it as a creative energy in the intellectual realm, that there's a drive for, there's a drive for that expression to create. We look at Melanie, and is, isn't she gifted? Melanie, uh, and we see all the graphics that she, that, you know, while she's learning and listening to the calls, she's, she's painting and drawing, she's expressing that, right? That's, that is sex energy, not being expressed physically, being expressed in this creative way, okay? So we're dealing with the same energy, just at varying degrees and in different expressions, okay? On the spiritual realm, it's expressed through the spirit of compassion, enthusiasm, and encouragement. Now, these are, these are very natural states, compassion, enthusiasm, and encouragement, which we can certainly develop. You can develop more compassion. You can develop more encouragement. You can develop more enthusiasm. But when they are, when they are, when there is a drive for them, it is, it is in those energies, in compassion and encouragement and, uh, 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 and, 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 and an enthusiasm that the creative energy can be birthed. It's where this creative energy flourishes. So, as I use Melanie as an example, as she creates, as she creates, when someone who is expressing this same energy from a spiritual realm is enthusiastic and encouraging of her, it helps her develop that skill. It, it encourages her to take maybe a more risk creatively than she would. It has her create even more abundantly than she normally would. So in the spiritual realm, this energy of sex is being expressed through compassion. It's a state of being, compassion, enthusiasm, encouragement. These are states of being. Yes, you can encourage and be an encourager. This is a beingness, right? So it's all the same energy, just varying degrees. And again, it's not, it's not that you're one or the other. I'm asking you, where might you be dominant? Where might you be dominant? Because you, you, you're expressing them at all three, but you might not be dominant in all three. And chances are you aren't. If you go to line 289 to 296, I think this will help make the point. This study to close the fact that the major reason why the majority of men who succeed do not begin to do so before the age of 40 or 50. It is, it is, is their tendency to dissipate their energies through overindulgence in physical expression of the emotion of sex. The majority of men never learn that the urge of sex has other possibilities, I'm going to say other expressions, which far transcend in importance that of the mere physical expression. The majority of those who make this discovery do so after having wasted many years at a period when the sex energy is at its height prior to the age of 45 to 50. This 
usually is followed by noteworthy achievement. Now, I know I'm talking in generalities, okay? And I'm also going to speak from my own life. But in general, the reason most men don't master it until they reach age 40 is because most men lack emotional intelligence. It's not because men have this 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 disproportionate urge although I understand and some of you are going to say yes but you've got the men have testosterone and there's a need for men to procreate that's stronger than in women we're talking about the physical expression of the act of sex here and why would men be wasting the energy on just the physical expression of sex more than women and it's not just because they have testosterone and because God's created us to be the seed through which we procreate mankind. It's also because in our programming, at least certainly in the American culture and in most other cultures around the world, boys are not encouraged at a very early age to expl express what some would call feminine energies, creative energies, like dance class, like art class, right? These things that we develop that are creative, that is an expression of sex energy, if you will. And so there's an altered learning curve that's introduced into the programming that kind of retards the full expression of the other degrees of sex and creative energy. That's what I'm saying. And so what happens is by the time a guy reaches 40, by that time, They've been married, most. I'm talking in generalities. They've been married. They've had children. They've been aunts or uncles. Uh, they've had some life lessons that have taught them the softer side of who they are, right? They've, they've explored more. They've, they've, they've gained more confidence that it's okay for them to explore different parts of who they are and their personality. There's less judgment in their lives by this time. Okay, and so that energy begins to dissipate. Now, yes, and naturally, yes, testosterone drops. I get it. I understand all that. But again, I'm not. I'm not talking just about that. I'm not talking just about the sex drive, right? I'm talking about the full expression of the energy. And so we're going back and forth. We're going back and forth. But I think the most important part of this lesson for you to understand is is that sex when we separate it from an act and we see it as energy, can absolutely be expressed on these three planes differently. And so when I was a child, you know, you know, d d developing, developing uh, EQ was difficult. It was difficult, A, because I'm a boy, and also when a child is, when a child is, is growing up in an environment or in conditions and circumstances that that might be abusive right that might be um abusive physically or verbally or emotionally or sexually or in a in an environment in a home where there is fear or uncertainty when a child is developing in this energy they're also going to have a low EQ and they're going to compartmentalize this creative energy of sex to its physical. And very rarely will they develop it into the higher degrees. Sex will stay as an act at its lowest base level of awareness. So a person raised in this environment in these conditions can absolutely, you know, absolutely change and transcend it and can absolutely learn how to to go from 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 sex as a physical act to, to having sex with emotion and with love and with these other higher sides but for most people um they don't most people who are raised in 
an abusive or fear-based environment never learn the emotional intelligence necessary to allow that creative energy to be expressed in any higher form other than its physical expression? And certainly for men, it, it's harder. And, you know, um, you know, we will see men risk their reputations for physical experiences. Risk their reputation. You know, it's whether you like him or not, when, when President Bill Clinton dies and up comes on the news, you know, we're, you know, we regret to inform you that President Bill Clinton has passed away. How many minutes do you think it will be before there's a picture of Monica Lewinsky on the screen? How many minutes do you think it's going to take? I bet it's going to, I bet, I bet there's going to be a picture of her within three minutes. I have a bet. I bet that there'll be a picture of Monica Lewinsky before they show a picture of his daughter. Why would we risk all of our reputations for a physical experience? And the reason for that is because there's, you remember in my lesson, we talk about seven levels of awareness. And you have different levels of awareness in different areas of your life. You can find somebody who is, you know, highly intelligent, operate at one of the lowest levels of awareness when it comes to their own sexuality. And, and they haven't learned how to, how to separate from the physical act. And the physical act, that energy dominates them. Look at lines 334 through 338. People are influenced in their actions, not by reason so much as by feelings. We call this the drive. The creative faculty of the mind is set into action entirely by emotions and not by cold reason. The most powerful of all human emotions is that of sex. There are other mind stimulants, some of which have been listed, but no one of them, nor all of them combined, can equal the driving power of sex. It is creative energy. It is creative energy. And for procreation, for 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 mankind to continue to exist. Remember what I said in the very beginning, what he says very early in the chapter. This is inborn. This is natural. And the goal for this lesson is for you to identify, and there's an opportunity for you to grow in your understanding of how this energy is, is, is expressed on the three planes. And for me, it meant for me to channel the drive for the physical act and to transmute that energy to more creative and productive expressions in my life. And I'm so grateful that I was learning this lesson at a really early age, right? That I didn't implode my life. As we see so many men do. Successful, highly intelligent, blessed, honorable men ruin it. No, so... You know, rather than kind of just wasting the gift of imagination on a physical need, I could take that same energy, I could take that same drive, and, and I can focus and apply it to other areas of my life, to other activities in my life, like thinking and fantasizing about my dream home, fantasizing about how I could grow my business. See, I could, I could learn to take that same energy. Once I could separate the act of sex and see it as a creative energy, then all of a sudden I, 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 I began to find new use for the energy, right? And I could, use that, I could use that same power of imagination, which is very powerful, but I could use it in a much more powerful way and in a different way that would serve me. And, you know, over the years, um, I've learned to be able to use this energy in a very creative, positive way and in a very different way, in an opposite of a way than what I was kind of conditioned and programmed and accepted in my life. So 
you know, very few people, and, 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 and you can look at this. You can, you can take people who are operating in, in the opposite way for me. For me, this physical expression. You could, you could take somebody who has this energy, and they're very creative energy. Maybe, again, maybe they're artistic. Maybe there's a giftedness to them in that area. Maybe they're a singer. And, you know, I worked with, I worked with a, a woman who was very gifted, very, very talented. Um, but when she would express this energy, she would only express it at the intellectual, emotional level, in, 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 in the creative way, right, intellectually. And she would, she would, she would express it through her ability to sing, and she had a beautiful voice, but she was really shy. And she would kind of hold back. So in other words, she wouldn't express this energy physically, in physical touch. And, you know, uh, you could say that, well, you know, what was holding her back was maybe, maybe self-confidence, but she could stand in front of people and sing. You could say that maybe it was self-judgment, and, and that's right. I mean, there, there's no way that, 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 that there's no way you can say that she didn't have that. So she has this self-confidence and she has this self-judgment. She's able to express this creative energy, but she can't she can't express it in physical form. To, she couldn't make herself more attractive to people. Now, I didn't say pretty. I meant attractive. In other words, she couldn't take that creative energy and use it so it was so so, so that it would that, that it would attract people to her because this energy, this sex energy, is appealing, right? It is attractive. It's magnetic. You, it's charisma, right? Again, we're separating the act of sex from kind of the understanding of energy, and you know, if if she wanted to make a shift to be a star, she was going to have to be more attractive to people. She was going to have to be more appealing to people. She was going to have to have more, more magnetism, more charisma. People were going to have to be more drawn to her, and she was going to have to be okay with being present. Now, I'm not suggesting that she had to, you know, swing from the ropes and make some video and <laughs> like we see some of these people on MTV or these other movie channels. Whoa, you know, I'm not saying that. But, but but I am suggesting that she had to allow herself the, the 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 time to allow that energy to manifest in a different way other than just her creative outlet. She had to be able to express it physically. Now look at look at look at Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, you know, I don't think any of us look at that Mother Teresa and say, you know, Mother Teresa is a sex symbol, right? At least not in the physical plane. But she's, she, Mother Teresa was a sex symbol. Huge sex energy, if you think about it. She was highly attractive and appealing to people. She had a, she had a magnetism. And she had the physical expression of this sex energy in, in the highest form of love. There was love in her touch. You would see pictures of her where she would touch people and you know I never touched her I never had her touch me but there's a there's a there's an image a pic, a, be, a beautiful picture of her I think all of us have seen her where she's smiling and she's holding her hands and there's this soft and she's beautiful she's beautiful and you just you just wish she could touch you right and that that's that energy and so we see her, we see Mother Teresa as an encourager for other people. We see her as, as a compassionate person. We see her as, as a person who lives life with enthusiasm. And so we see all three expressions of this energy in physical form, in creative form. Think of what she created in the world, her work in the world. And we see it in, in, in its spiritual expression. Mother Teresa had sex appeal. She, she knew it was not enough for her just to have this spiritual energy. 
It wasn't enough for her just to be compassionate. It wasn't enough for her just to have enthusiasm. It just it wasn't enough for her to 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 to, to have this encouragement gift. And she knew it wasn't enough for her just to be creative in her imagination, for her to imagine a world without hate, to imagine a world fulfilled and full of peace and love. She had that creative gift too. But she also knew that she had to be able to express it in physical form. That this was an expression, that this was a natural and inborn resource. And you know what? I'm going to tell you what. It's also a pretty deadly weapon. It's a creative force. But it's a deadly weapon too. I mean, it is destructive when couples withhold sex energy from each other. When they don't encourage each other. When they're not compassionate with each other. When they're not enthusiastic for each other. When they're not when they're not engaging in creative things together. When they're not sharing the emotional energy and the creative life force of this energy. And when they withhold the physical expression and needs of love. The physical expression. It's 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 equally it's equally as destructive if if, if we express if, if all we express is just the spiritual energy. If we express just the spiritual side of this energy and not not all three. See we simultaneously live on three planes of existence. And I would encourage you through this lesson to really look at your life and ask yourself, am I expressing this creative energy on all three planes of my life? Am I compassionate Am I encouraging? Am I enthusiastic? In my being, not just in my behavior. Am I engaged in the creative endeavor? Am I growing? Am I growing in other areas of my life? Am I, am, am I being causative in my own growth? Or am I allowing life to happen to me? Am I seeking more growth? In every area of my life, some more than others. And lastly, am I expressing it through physical touch? Am I expressing it through physical touch? If you're dominant in one like I was, you you need to learn the other two. Like I was dominant in the physical touch. For me, sex was an act. And I had to understand it as something other than an act. That it was a resource, that it was a gift, that it was an energy. That it was natural and inborn. And certainly there was there was the sex act. And certainly there's a need and there's a drive and there's a desire for that expression. And there are higher degrees of expression. And don't you also want to operate like I do at the highest level of awareness and at the highest expression? This is a great lesson. A great lesson for you to look at the energy of your life the areas of all of your life and recognize that you simultaneously live on three planes of existence. You're a spiritual being. You've been gifted with intellectual faculties of which you use to co-create your life and manifest things in physical form. I believe in you and I believe in you, Jerry.